ओके गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस बुद्धिज्म एंड जैनिज्म दिस नंबर थ्री चैप्टर्स नंबर थ्री चैप्टर एंड इन दिस डिस्कशन वी विल फाइंड आउट अबाउट वी विल फाइंड आउट द सोर्सेस फ्रॉम वेयर वी यूज टू नो अबाउट द जैनिज्म एंड बुद्धिज्म एंड नेक्स्ट we will discuss about the causes behind why these two gigantic um, existence of such religious sect which had which had completely changed the socio religious life of the people of india throughout northern india after that so why this type of two towering religious sects was uh, where arrived we will search it for and in our coming classes we will go through the doctrines of buddhism and jainism so the first of all i just want to give you a very precise very short introduction that is around 6th to 5th century BC in the northern and northwestern part of our country of our subcontinent of a ancient time in ancient time Jainism and Buddhism these two religious sect were arrived so the time frame is that from 6th century to from 6th Uh, sixth and fifth within within this time these two uh, prominent religious sect were arrived now these two religious sect not happened there all of a sudden not arrived there on all of a sudden and not fell from the planet mars so there were some causes there were some socio religious and socio economic causes even the political causes so we will discuss in our second segment of the discussion about these causes but primarily we will go through the sources where from uh, where we used to know about these two prominent religions from so the first of all in our discussion here we have uh, given a table and the first of all that is angas 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 it is a okay what is angas i am coming later angas this particular term this particular uh, object is very much associated with jainism so angas talk about angas told about jainism so what is angas angas this particular term was derived from agamas agamas angas come from the actually angas popularly known as known as agamas so agamas what is agamas agamas was the words the teachings which had been coming out from the from the mouth of the lord which had been coming out from the mouth of the lord now who was lord that is lord. who was lord in jain in jainism it is very easy to understand the lord they are talking about mahavir jain and agamas or angas were being compiled on the on the teachings 
and the words of mahavir after after he achieved the omniscience so that means the angas was a holy book or sacred book of genesis holy book or sacred book of jainism that is important now initially angas were angas had 12 parts angas were divided in 12 parts or organs which were separately called angas now these 12 angas collectively called dadas angas or dadas angi now with due course of time the disciples of uh, mahavir had also written 12 commentaries 12 commentaries over every individual angas those were called upangas so the jain sacred scripture jain religious scripture comes with the collaborative form of angas and upangas that is angas and upangas now <coughs> now according according to the according to the norms of the according to the method of the according to the process of the passing of knowledge passing of wisdom in those days angas and upangas were also passed off generation to generation disciples to coming disciples orally oral just like the vedas were passing through from the previous generation to the coming generation and it was in those days it was the norm of passing of the knowledge and wisdom from generation to generation so it was passing from one generation to another generation through uh, it was passing from one generation to other generation orally long after angas and upangas were being compiled when it was compiled around according to ramesh chandra majumdar eminent historians historian around around 4th century bc around 4th century bc in the region of patliputra in the region of patliputra there was a great famine happened and on account of this occasion the jainas the jains were divided between each other and one sect under the leadership of bhadra bahu had migrated to south india they were called digambar because they had refused to put on even a piece of cloth in order to cover their body and the remaining sect under the leadership of shil bhadra shil bhadra were called shetambar because they had accepted a piece of white cloth 
to cover up their body. Now, this remaining sect, that means Shwetambar sect, had called upon a conference in Patliputra and first initiated the compilation of the knowledge and wisdom, the teachings, the words of Mahavid Zain. Next, next, around 5th to 6th century BC, sorry, um, yes, 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 5th or 6th, 6th century AD. Next, after 1000 years, 1000 years after, around 5th to 6th, 6th century AD, at Ballavi in Gujarat, Another Jain conference, another relig Jain religious conference was held and the final compilation of Angas and Upangas were done in, in Agdha, uh, sorry, Ardha Magdhi Prakrit language, in Ardha Magdhi Prakrit language. Now, you need to know that what is this? What is this Ardha Mandhi Prakrit language? As you know that in ancient time, in ancient time, before the Aryans had, uh, before the Aryans had come here, <coughs> the Dravidian people used to, Dravidian people had their specific language, specific script, whatever it is. And after that, long years after, up, even after the um, Aryans, uh, um, Aryans um, settlement in India, the vast portion of India used to talk, used to express themselves in their local languages. And Aryan had their own languages, that is Sanskrit. Now, this particular local language in which the local paper, in which the local paper used to talk to, used to express themselves, those local languages were almost similar to each other, used, used to call, used to be called as the Prakrit language. Now, the, this particular Prakrit language was regarded as the inferior language in in terms of Sanskrit language from the Aryan's perspective. Now why Prakrit language was termed as inferior? Because Sans because Panini was there, a scholar, Sanskrit scholar, Aryan and he had pinned down Ashtadhyayi, the grammar book of Sanskrit language. So Sanskrit, this particular language had got its grammatical base, its foundation. But Prakrit, this particular language didn't have, didn't have its grammatical base or the foundation. So one can speak in Prakrit but cannot write Prakrit. You will get the Pali language after that. 
Pali and Prakrit almost similar to each other and didn't have the grammatical foundation. But Sanskrit had its grammatical foundation that is called that was called Ashtadhyayi. So that beside this, beside this, as the Prakrit was the language of the dominated paper, language of the ruled by paper, who were ruled by, who was dominated by the Aryans. So, so the Aryans used to term this particular language as inferior. Now, what is the meaning of Prakrit? Prakrit means Prokrito. In Bengali, I would like to say to you that is Prokrito Joner Bhasha. Prokrito Joner Bhasha. A Prokrito Jon K. Who is this Prokrito Jon? The people who used to live in live on the lap of the nature. The people who was the natural inhabitant of this subcontinent. The Aryans in those days were not regarded as the natural inhabitant. They had migrated here. They were called Odhi Bashi in Bengali. They acquired the land and started settling in and settling on. But the people who used to live on the lap of the nature, the natural people, was called Adi Bashi. That means Adi Bashinda. That means the people who had been living from the very beginning here. So the language they used to speak, that, that was called Prakrit language. But to write down this language, one needed to have the help of Brahmi Lipi, and Khorosti Lipi and Aramic Lipi or the Brahmi scripture, Khorosti scripture or Aramic scripture. That is important. <coughs> now, this language had their different written form as I have told you, Brahmi script or Khrust script or Aramic script. So these different scriptures were based on the different geographical areas. Now come to Ardha Madhi Prakrit. When you have to concentrate in the time frame, in the timing, when the period, when the Jainism was arrived and being spread through, that was the time of the Shodosh 16th Mahajanapadas throughout north and northwestern subcontinent of India, northwestern part of India, of Indian subcontinent. 16, the days of 16 Mahajanapadas we are talking about 6th century BC, since 6th century BC. In those days, among these 16 Mahajanapadas, Magad, which would be Patliputra after some time, the same place, the Magad or the Patliputra had been becoming, had been coming out as the most powerful Mahajanapadas which would be transformed into the state craftsy 
under the Mauryans after and would rule and would rule would dominate the Indian ancient history for so long period of time. Now the paper, paper means the common paper, the grassroots paper, the paper who had been talking in the particular Prakrit language in Magadha. That particular Prakrit language was termed as Ardha Madhi Prakrit. And as the Magadha or Patliputra was the most powerful Mahajanapada, so Jainism, and we will see the Buddhism too, had been centered in Patliputra and spreaded or spread it through this particular language, spread it through Pali language, spread it through Prakrit language and Ardhamadhi Prakrit language and compiled the disciples of these two religions had compiled their respective scriptures in these languages in these languages but they had taken the help of Brahmi scripture, Kharashti scripture and Aramic scripture etc. So that is the history between uh, that is the hi history which is hidden inside the term Ardha Magdhi Prakrit language. One more thing is that why Mahabir and next Buddha and the disciples of him had chosen this Ardha Magdhi Prakrit language. Why not Sanskrit? Because most of the disciples were coming from the grassroots segment, the inferior segment of the society. And their language was Prakrit language, Pali language, etc. And next one, next one, the preachers, that means Buddha and Mahavid, wanted to, wanted to reach to the broader segments, broader sections of the society, broader section of the people, and that's why they wanted to speak in, they wanted to spread their respective words, philosophies, their respective religious uh, teachings through the common people's language so that Prakrit language was chosen to compile Ardhamadhi Prakrit language chosen to compile Angas and Upangas. Now what, now the historical importance of Angas or Upangas or whatever the other Sanghas. What we used to know about, what we used to know about that time, we used to know from Angas, first of all the Jain doctrine, the Jain doctrine, what is the Jainism? What is the Jainism? We used to know from this religious sect, this, uh, 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 this religious scripture, this sacred scripture of Jainism. Next one, we used to know the religious rites, the stages of household's life, householder's life, the different stages of householder's life, the vows of chastity, the rules and the conducts of rules, rules and the conduct for the followers of that particular religion, that means Jainism and the, and the other features of Jain philosophy. So, along with this, we used to know 
about the socio-economic time, the socio-economic life, the political life of the period, of the period which was lasted between 6th century BC to 2nd century BC. Next one we will go through the Tripitakas. The name, name suggests the first of all it was, it is <coughs> the religious text of religious scripture of Buddhism. As you know this and uh, Tripitak or Tripitakas means three petticles or three baskets. Now three baskets of the Buddha of the knowledge and wisdom of Buddhism, three baskets full, three basket full of the religious teachings of Buddhism, three basket full of religious uh, and the social and moral and ethical life the teachings over that, over these things three basket full of teachings over the uh, religion, religious, social, economical life of the people. Okay. Now, this Tripitaka was written in Pali language. Now, I have discussed along that what is Pali language similar to Prakrit language. Anyway, come to the point. The first of all, now, trip, the different peticles or different basket we will go through of Tripitaka. The first one, Binaya Pitaka. So, Binaya Pitaka. What is Binaya Pitaka? What is the content of Binaya Pitaka? Binaya Pitaka contains the rule and regulations, the rule, the rules and regulations designed for monks, Buddhist monks and Buddhist nuns. Now, the different rules and regulations were it is said that different rules and regulation of Binoy Pitaka were compiled, were told, were preached by the afterwards disciples, direct disciples and afterward disciples of Lord Buddha. Number one. Number two, that is Sutta Pitaka. Now, what was Sutta Pitaka? Sutta Pitaka contains the teachings, the words of Buddha. The teachings, words, the wisdom, Buddha's advice. So, these things were being compiled in Sutta Pitaka. It is also believed that in Sutta Pitaka, some teachings were there which were compiled, which were preached by the direct disciples like Sariputta, like Ananda or Buddha. Next it comes the most significant segment of Tripitakas that is Avidhamma Pitaka, Avidhamma Pitaka. So what's that? Avidhamma Pitaka. Avidhamma Pitaka talks about the philosophical aspects of Buddha's teaching, Buddha's words, philosophical aspects of Buddha's philosophy, philosophical aspects of Buddha's philosophy. If Buddha's uh, uh, Buddhism, I would say. Now. This Avidhamma Pitaka talks about the Nirvana, 
the most significant most interesting segment of buddhism that is the theory of nirvana this particular segment is being discussed is being preached is being talked in abhidhamma pitaka next the most significant source is jataka now jataka jataka was also jataka is also considered as the religious sect or the uh, religious scripture of buddhism now why jataka was considered like this that is the important question because jataka contains mostly jataka contains the previous life of buddha previous life of buddha in different man human and animal form jatakas what is jataka actually jatakas is a compilation of short stories having the moral advice ethical advice that is jatakas in every story there were different characters it could be the animal characters like uh, like fable it could be the uh, human characters now in every story there is a central character which was regarded as the different avatars different i mean uh div- um ha huh, different avatars of buddha just like in 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 a particular story he is coming like a he is coming as a king in a particular story he is coming as an elephant in a particular story he is coming uh, as an outcast so this way jatakas had been talking about the previous life of buddha the scripture of jataka were also illustrated in buddhist sculptures and paintings and historian eminent historian ak ward had been telling that jatakas had been considering jatakas as the, as the precursors of the biography of buddha precursors precursor of the biography of buddha very interesting and next next we need to know that interestingly uh, one interesting thing about jataka is that jataka throughout had been discussed had been told the different stories about the about the what about the previous life of buddha but not the present life of buddha present life of buddha means from the buddha's buddha's about the buddha's growth what is that from the life of gautam to the i mean uh, b- 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 to the life of buddha to his, to his mahavinis kraman to his nirvana so throughout the uh, biography the present biography was very much absent in jataka now the historical importance of jataka first of all we knew about the buddhism from jataka the etymological etymological i mean uh, establishment of buddhism next we used to know the society in those days the economy in those days the politics in those days from jataka so these were almost all over the uh, historical importance of i mean jainism and buddhism 
uh, the, the historical importance of different holy books or sacred books of Jainism and Buddhism. So, from these books, Angas, Upangas, Tripitakas, Jatakas, we had become, we, we had our knowledge over Jainism and Buddhism. So, up to this today, in our remaining class, we will go through the later portion. Uh, thank you for the day.